It's finally time to wrap up the basics of a smart home. Today, we're going to be talking about thermostats, one of the best ways to save money with a smart home. Before we jump into today's video, I wanna give you a quick reminder and recap of what we've already done. If you haven't seen it already, I'd love it if you take a moment and watch this playlist from the very beginning. Maybe you're looking at thermostats because you wanna start building out a smart home. I'd really encourage you to watch the entire playlist of how to build out a smart home. Stay tuned for the end of the video because we've got a bonus tip as well as some bonus content as to what's coming next. What exactly is a smart thermostat? Aren't all thermostats smart? Not exactly. Most of your average thermostats that come inside your home, they do have the ability to set schedules so you can set certain times of day when your thermostat will turn on or turn off, but not all of them have some of the advanced capabilities and tracking that a smart thermostat does. The biggest thing is that you can manage it from an app, which gives you the ability to not have to get up and touch the thermostat every time you need to change it. You can all do it from the comfort of your couch, your bed, from your phone. Further, it gives you the ability to connect it to voice assistance. That way you can manage the temperature in the room or in your house with the power of your voice just by giving a simple command. Further features that smart thermostats have are geofencing. Simply put, geofencing is the tracking of your device in relation to its thermostat in this case. Geofencing can be in relation to other things, but specifically for the purposes of this video, and what we're talking about. Geofencing is whenever your thermostat realizes that your phone has left its home, your home, and you are now considered away. So your thermostat might set you to an away status so that it's no longer continuing to produce heat for your home when you're not home. One of the biggest things that sets smart thermostats apart is automations. Having the power to be able to set automations up so your thermostat does certain things whenever you go a certain place, or maybe you're on your way home and your phone can track where you're at and then give a command to your hub and set up an automation or trigger an automation to turn your thermostat on or even off. Now, besides all those amazing features as to what exactly a smart thermostat is, why would you use a smart one instead of just a regular one if all you have to do is set a schedule? Generally, smart thermostats have a little bit more capability and power to be able to see what your trends and history are. Yes, they're tracking you. Everything tracks you. If you have a smartphone, it's probably tracking you. And honestly, if you're watching this video, you really don't care too much about the tracking situation. What it does is it tracks the usage of your thermostat. Whether you have a furnace or in-floor heating like I do, it can tell when you're turning it on, when you're turning it off, and some of the trends to be able to help save you time of it being engaged. This way your thermostat is telling your heating system to turn off when it truly isn't needed to be on. The system I use is something called Ecobee. Ecobee has an Eco Plus mode, which further tracks the trends of my usage of my heating system and will shut it down and make sure it's not using it. Now it won't allow my house to fall below a certain temperature, but it does allow it to fall a little bit further when it knows that I'm not needing those services. In this case, the heat. I mentioned this one a moment ago, but geofencing is a great reason why you should be using smart thermostats. What geofencing does again, is it tracks if your phone is home in this case. Most of the time it's tra connecting your phone to the thermostat and registering if you're in a close enough proximity for it to consider you to be home. Now, if you leave your home and go a far enough distance away, it's going to register you as a way. It's going to immediately shut off the power to your heating system. So it's no longer trying to heat your home. Now, obviously there is a threshold for how low it can go. If your home is above that temperature, it might be in a case that you're supposed to have it on. It will just immediately shut it off. You can go outside your normal routine and it will stop heating your home. Whereas with a regular one, it's gonna to continue to heat it if you fall below that certain temperature. What's also really great about smart ones is they have the ability to alter what range you wanna be able to control your thermostat. One of the reasons why I chose Ecobee 
is because it gave me the power to actually change so that let's say I want my house set to 70 degrees. If it falls to 69 in my house, most thermostats immediately kick on. What's great is with Ecobee, I could change it to two degrees. So it would go down to 68 degrees before it actually kicked on, which helps save me money because it doesn't need to be on as often. Another big one that I mentioned earlier is automations. Automations are so powerful being able to enhance the capability of your thermostat. I have in-floor heat, so my house and heating situation is a little different. For most people, you have a furnace, and when you go turn your thermostat on, within a few minutes, your house is warmed up some. Sometimes it takes 15, 20 minutes. What's interesting with in-floor heat is it can take hours at a time. Most of the time, if it's a little, if you're a little chilly, we don't turn the heat on. We go get a warmer shirt on or jacket or sweater or get a blanket. We're not always gonna immediately turn on the heat because it's gonna take an hour or two before it actually reaches the temperature that I want it to be. And by then you've maybe warmed up or you've eaten something or whatever, you know, you're not cold anymore. There are some drawbacks with in-floor heating like if it's really hot outside, there's nothing I can do to really cool my house down like you can with a furnace, but I won't even go there. An automation that I've set up is when I'm at church on certain days of the week, after a certain time, the thermostat's gonna kick itself on even though I'm not home. Now it doesn't do it if it's above a certain temperature, but I have it set up this way because in the winter time, I live in Alaska, it's really cold. I want that house, I want my house to start heating up long before I've actually gotten home. Because again, with a furnace, it's going to take a couple minutes, but with in-floor heating, it can take a lot longer. So I want my house starting to warm up. Specifically, it's the upstairs thermostats. I have a master bedroom one that's set on its own zone, as well as I have the rest of my upstairs that's set on another zone. I have a four zone house, so I have a downstairs, master bedroom, upstairs, and then my garage is all in its own zones. I have three eco bees that run all of those various zones. Automations just further enhance our capability and ability to adjust when we want our house to be heated and not heated. What's also really great is with the power of additional sensors. There's two types of sensors that generally work really, really well when it comes to thermostats. Now, Ecobee includes these a lot of times when you buy their bundle. They call them their smart sensors. Ecobee includes these great little sensors with their bundle pack and you can purchase additional ones. Now they are a little spendy, but they connect directly to the Ecobee. You can purchase less expensive ones and route them through a smart home hub to trigger your thermostat. But what's great is these ones are managed directly by Ecobee and have a really great connectivity. Essentially what this does, to use an example, is my upstairs. The upstairs thermostat runs three bedrooms, a bathroom, a hallway, and the laundry room. The thermostat is upstairs in a hallway, which actually gets really hot at times or really cold. And so what it does is with these temperature sensors, I can put these in the other rooms upstairs and the thermostat is gonna know the individual temperatures of each of these sensors. What will then happen is it's going to take an average reading of them. For instance, if you had two sensors and the thermostat, one read 69, one read 70, and one read 71, then the temperature on the thermostat is actually going to read 70 degrees. It's going to take the median or average style of the temperatures. So that way, if one room is really hot and one room is really cold and that average temperature falls below your set amount, it will still kick on. A couple of the rooms are really hot and it's bringing that average temperature up. It won't trigger and make those rooms overly hot. The other sensor that you can use is one that we've already discussed, and that's contact sensors. Ecobee also includes contact sensors, but it's not the contact sensors that run automations. They're contact sensors directly linked to Ecobee. And what's really cool is you can set these up on doors or windows. And what it does is whenever you open that window or door, and you can set it to after a certain amount of time, it turns your heat off. This is really important with furnaces because you can lose the heat super fast when a window is or a door is open. You can use regular contact sensors to trigger automation so you can set a longer delay if you would like, or you can link multiple contact sensors together so that if a certain number of them are open, that's when it actually will shut your heat off. This is a further savings of money when it comes to your heat because you're not heating the outside when you have doors or windows open or cooling if you're in a climate that's really hot because you don't want to be letting all that cold air go right out the window or the door when you open it. Another really great feature of the eco thermostats 
and these little smart sensors they have is they actually give us occupied and unoccupied status as well. So if all of these sensors are reading as unoccupied, but the heat's supposed to kick on, it's not gonna kick on right away, even though that temperature might fall that two degrees. It will give it a few more degrees before it tries to bring it back online and start warming up those areas. I'm really just scratching the surface here as to what the power is of these thermostats are. I really encourage everyone to get it in the building of their smart home. It's towards the end of building it, mostly because it's something that's more of a bonus feature because we already have thermostats in our home and we already have some features built into them. Also, these can get pretty expensive. I wanna say I spent three or $400 getting all of the thermostats I needed for my home. Now my home's a little unique. As I mentioned earlier, I do have three thermostats I had to change. Could change my garage one as well. I just don't feel like it's super necessary and I don't generally encourage people to do it because it's a lot of money for an area we don't spend as much time in. Now here's the big question. Which thermostat should you buy? Well, that's really up to you and what your budget is. I strongly encourage people to look at Ecobee. Ecobee is great because it works with all the platforms, Apple, Google and the Amazon platform, and they come chock full of features. Some of them even have an Alexa built directly into the thermostat itself. Might be a little excess, but again, it gives you that capability of having a voice assistant nearby, so you don't really have to raise your voice to be able to just talk to one, which is pretty cool. The next one is Nest. Nest is directly linked to Google, so it's gonna work better and more intuitively with Google versus the other platforms, but it still does connect to them. The other two that are honorable mentions is Amazon and Tuya. Tuya is really just an all around smart platform that you can find all kinds of devices for. There's all different brands and manufacturers that work off of the Tuya network. So you can find a smart thermostat that runs off of that and you can sometimes find them that are a little bit more to your liking, they look fancier, that type of stuff. Also, they're gonna be a little bit better on your pocketbook. The last one is Amazon. Amazon recently has been diving deep into the smart home market and they have started building out their own thermostats. I want to say they're around the $80 mark. I haven't had a chance to test them out because I have my Ecobees and I really don't want to swap them up. It was kind of a lot of work to get these ones connected. But the Amazon ones are really, really affordable. And Amazon, of course, works directly in with Alexa, so it's gonna be super easy to integrate that into your smart home network. Now, I promised you a bonus tip. What's coming next? We've already wrapped up the basics of a smart home, right? Not exactly. There is a whole nother video that's gonna come out next week that I wanna dive further into additional devices, sensors that you could be purchasing to help build out your smart home that are still considered basic, that are more of an honorable mention type situation versus actually being a whole video's worth of just talking about one specific style of device here. So next week, I'm gonna talk about some really great ones that you can purchase or might actually be already in your home that you can get for your home that is gonna not only help save you money, but also can save your home from major, major damage. We'll get to that later. Stay tuned for the next video. I really wanna take a moment and just say thank you for watching. It means so much whenever you take time out of your day to watch my videos. This is something I, I absolutely love making these videos. It's so much fun being able to educate people. I've gotten lots of feedback on some of my videos as to how awesome it was and how well I broke things down. So if you liked this video, like it, hit that subscribe button downstairs downstairs hit that subscribe button down below share this with a friend comment as well i'd love to hear what thermostat you might be using or what aut automations you are using thank you again for watching we'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye